Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just your average Joe here from the 19th century, when social Darwinism was a big deal. Now, basically, Charles Darwin's theory of natural selection, which says that only the strong and the fit will survive, was also applied to the social and economic issues of the time, meaning that if you're rich, you will survive. And the government didn't do much to help at first with the not-so-rich people, which who we call the poor people. Now, the government didn't tax business profits or negotiate business owners' relationships with their workers, since they were helping our newly formed economy boom. You're not fit to walk on the same side of the road. I have money and you don't. Walk away, you peasant. Tragic, isn't it? The rich man thought he was better than the peasant girl just because he had money and she didn't. And a rich man would never let a peasant borrow money to even try to be a success. You're either born a success or you're not. It's that simple. And that's the applied theory of rich versus poor. Get back to work, you animal, and make me lots of money while you paid almost nothing. But, sir. What about socialism? Huh. Socialism will never catch on. Capitalism will be here forever. Now, as you know, capitalism didn't stay around forever. Capitalism symbolized privately owned businesses in it for lots and lots of profit. And without government regulations, giant corporations emerged. On the other hand, socialism symbolizes society owning and operating the business rather than by private people. You know, in socialism, everyone has a little share of the work. Now, what we just saw was business owners versus their workers. Give me your land. Indian not our land. Well, I can, so leave. Now, another part of social Darwinism was that the white European was more advanced than other cultures. Now since they were more advanced than the other cultures, they would overpower anyone else. And the Indian population soon ceased to exist. Now that is the applied theory of Anglos versus Native Americans. Hello, I'm John Davidson Rockefeller, and I was coming to negotiate to see if you could lower your railroad prices for me. It's too expensive for me to ship my oil across the country. So if I promised you 60 carloads a day, would you lower your transportation prices for me? I think we can make a deal. Thank you. Now as soon as Rockefeller made that deal, he started saving tons and tons of money. And with all that profit he made by saving all that money, he turned around and bought other oil companies one at a time until there were none left but his own standard oil company. Now he was able to set the price on oil at whatever he wanted since he had no competition and this created our first monopoly in America. After years and years of doing nothing about the monopoly, the government stepped in and passed the Sherman Antitrust Act which eventually broke up Rockefeller's company and sold it off into pieces so that there could be competition and prices were then lowered. Now, if that law wasn't passed, do you think you would have been lucky enough to have been born successful or fit for society? As that law states, you know, only the fit survive. Now, join us next week as we ask the question, is McDonald's really responsible for obesity in America? Now, I'm your average Joe. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. Yes. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just your average Joe from the 19th century, but social Darwinism was a big deal. And basically, social Darwin's theory, it's Charles Darwin's theory of natural <laughs> Now, basically, social Darwinism, Charles Darwinism. The government didn't tax business profits or negotiate the business relationships business relation, business owners relationships to the workers. Tragic, isn't it? The rich man thought he was better than the poor peasant girl just because he had more money than her. Now, that is the... <laughs> Dang it.
Get back to work, you. <laughs> Get back to work, you, you animal, and make me lots of money while you get paid. Wait. Wait. Get back to work, you animal, and make. <sighs> it's all right. Huh! Get social. Give me your land. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Hello. I'm John Davis Rockefeller. And I was coming to negotiate your rubber prices. And I noticed they were way too high. So I was coming to see if we can have a deal. <laughs> Hello. I'm John Davis Rockefeller. And I was coming to see. If you could lower your expenses of your rubber prices and see if I can. I can do it. I'm sorry. I just. I'm just gonna. Go. This should be the last take. Alright. Alright. <clears throat> now, as soon as Rockefeller made that deal, he started saving tons and tons of money. Then, with that profit of that, all that money he saved, he bought out. Other. Oh, other. I can't read my own handwriting. That's not good, is it? Mm, not really. <laughs> Alright. Starting one more time. Now, he was able to set the prices at whatever he wanted, since he had no competition, and this, <laughs> which eventually broke up Rockefeller's company and was sold off into pieces, so that there could be competition and prices were then lowered. Stop yelling, you kid! Let's do that again. <laughs> Ant! <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight!